The journey of my life started in the town of Landshut, which is in Bavaria, Germany. And um, at the age of five, then I, I, we moved from Landshut to Munich, which you know, capital of Bavaria, but also world capital of beer, because the Oktoberfest is home in Munich, but also FC Bayern Munich. And so Munich is my hometown. And like you, I was growing up in a loving family. My family just was different in one way that we were the single possible unit a family could have. We were two, my mother and myself. And my mother was a loving, young, single mom who made ends meet with the little money we had so I could still have a normal childhood. My mother was also a very young mother because she gave birth to me when she was 19. And two years then after that, she split with my father and we continued our journey together. And it was literally a journey because whatever money my mother could save, we invested in travel. So initially in the 70s, we traveled through, through Europe, or in, in southern Europe, in Greece often. But then I still remember that one moment, it was in December 1987, when my mother came home and said, Wolfie, she always calls me Wolfie, the short version. <laughs> I bought the tickets. I said, where to, mom? Bought the ticket to Indonesia, which was like a, a dream exotic country away. Then we did indeed travel together in the summer of 1988. It was my first time outside Europe, and it shaped my own perspective on the world because I saw something completely new and different. And building on that later then at the age of 19, when I, uh, after the end of high school, I traveled on my own with a backpack from Cape Town to Cairo. And then two years later after that, and my parents-in-law still don't forgive me for this until today, I took my girlfriend and now wife on a similar trip for the train from Munich to Moscow to Mongolia and to China. So that was our big trip at that time. And all these trips explain also why I'm now living an international life today. Now, when my now wife and I made this enormous trip to East Asia, to China, Mongolia, and Russia, my mother made the trip of her life. She went to India on her own. She was 40 at that time, on a backpack, and traveled the country herself. Now, shortly, and this picture that you'll see now is uh, my mother at that time, uh, in 1992, 1993. My mother then, shortly after this trip, died. She died suddenly in a car accident together with her mother. And you can imagine, this was one of the first times that I asked myself, how long will I live? And because my mother was such a young mother, and she was 40 when she died, I was already an adult, and together with my, my girlfriend and now wife. Now, what is and was still the most dramatic experience in my own life was actually, if you just step back and think of human history and all of your predecessors, something quite normal. We were actually lucky to live till 40 for most of human history. And here you just see the last 2,000 years when life expectancy, normal average life, lasted only 20 or 30 years. So you were lucky indeed to make it till 40. And it's only the last two, 300 years with the invention of penicillin, improved sanitation, health, nutrition, that people could live longer. Do you know how long people live today? It's actually 72 is the average life expectancy in the world. In the rich countries, it's 80. So we are more than double the average life expectancy in the world now. Today, I'm 43 years old. I'm older than my mother was when she died. And imagine all the, if TED had been held, the TED conferences 250 years ago, most of us would have never made it on stage. <laughs> our prime time would have been over before our, our years had started. And many of you in the audience would have not been there either. So we are in this luxurious period that we can experience a long life. And think of the waste that happened, the, the tragedies, the, the Mozarts and the Einsteins that, that died of diarrhea. All those talents that were lost and that we now have a chance to to go beyond. Now, what's important to understand that since 
people started to live longer, and since babies that were dying before survived, we became much more people. So we are now on a journey, all of us, from 1 billion to 10 billion. And we're already in the middle of it. But as you see from the green line, very similar to the blue line, right? The blue line shows you how much people now live longer. The green line shows how many more people we are. And so they go together. Only once people started to live longer, once children started surviving, we became more people. Rapid population growth is a result of development. It's not a result of misery. It's something inherently positive with new challenges we have to deal with now. Now, here's an interesting fact. This journey from 1 billion only started very recently. It just started 110 years ago. 110 years ago, 1904. That's when we, or our predecessors, our great-grandparents, lived when the world became 1 billion. All the thousands of years before, the world was always below 1 billion and went even up and down during the time of the pest and cholera in Europe and beyond. And now we're on this rapid ride from 1 billion to 10 billion, and the real action is actually happening in our time. In the, our time and the time of our parents and grandparents, those who live from 1950 to 2050. That's when the world is rising from 2.5 billion to 9.5 billion. And then we'll go to 10 billion for those of us still around, and then it will probably go a bit slower. So that means that we are living in this unique time of human history where the world is, the world is shaping and reshaping itself through this dramatic population growth. Now, one thing that you still remember from school that was there was the population pyramid, and that's changing too. The pyramid was there when I was at school in 1980. Many children, fewer in the 20s and 30s, and then much fewer older people. Now, guess what? This doesn't exist anymore today because we're seeing a filling up of adults. We're getting a population bell now, and then soon the next generation will be living in the population barrel. So, not more children, but a lot more adults driving this population growth today, all over the world. Now, you may say, okay, well, that sounds somewhat interesting, um, but what does it mean for me now? What does this have an impact for me? And I'll do now something with you that I hope you'll enjoy, which is I'll show you a tool that I developed with some friends and which we'll launch today. You can see it on population.io. And I want to explain now briefly what we did. Otherwise, you go home tonight and tell your, your friends and partners, says, you know, there was a TED Talk today and this guy did some magic with me and it was quite of weird. And we'll do some magic with you, but it's based on data. And so that's what I'll do with you. So um, imagine your age. I hope you know how old you are. It's just, you know, your age. <laughs> now, what we'll do with you is to determine your relative age, which is how old you are compared to everybody else in the world or everybody else in your home country. And how do you do this? Well, you line up just everybody. And so imagine we would now line up all of you here. And I know in this room there is a youngest person and there is an oldest person. And all the others are in between. And so there's a number one and then there's the end number, a thousand. We are a thousand people here today. Uh, imagine we do the same with the world. There's a number one baby just born and then there's a number 2.7 billion, uh, billion, which is the oldest person in the world. And what we did is we lined everybody up. And then, um, well, everybody, all of us, you too, you have a position in this, a distinct number. And I'll tell you that number, and later you can check it out yourself. Now, the data is not perfect. Um, some countries even don't have perfect date, death, and, and birth certificate systems. But uh, it's the best we can do, so that's what I'll show you now. We'll do it with my case. I'm born, I'm 43 years old. I'm born in January 20, 1971. 10 years after John F. Kennedy was inaugurated. And um, now I'm a German, that's my home country, and I'm male. Now, I'll do something with you now. Imagine the world is organized in three groups. There's the young group, the young 2.4 billion people. There's the middle group, middle also 2.4 billion, and the old group. Now, imagine you're my age, or just imagine for me now. Which group do I fall under? So now I'll see you now a bit. So now with hands up, please. So who thinks I'm in the young group? 
Ah, thank you. I see a few. And I'll invite you for a drink later. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, who thinks I'm in the middle group? OK, that's a big crowd. And who thinks I'm in the old group? OK. I, I was about to say I'd not invite you for a drink, but I, I still do because you're right. I'm an old guy. Um, I'm um, position 5 billion, 107 million and counting. And I'm in the world now position 70%. So 70% of the world is younger than me, 30% is older. Now, it's a bit depressing um, to see that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the good news is I'm from Germany, so we're an old country, so there I'm still fine. I'm uh, below 50%, I'm 47%, I'm 38, ranked 38 million in Germany. Now, um, in case you are still a bit shocked and depressed, I have something good for you as well now. Um, imagine you wanted to celebrate your birthday with everybody else who is born on your birthday. By the way, do you have an idea how many people have shared your birthday? Actually, the number is quite simple to calculate. It's 20 million, so 7.25 billion divided by 365, roughly 20 million. That's how many people would always celebrate when you do. But if you want to know how many exactly is my age, how many people are born the same day I was born and was a baby, and that number is different depending how old you are. And as you see now, in my case, it's 259,000, roughly. Um, and most of them live in China, 67,000. <laughs> So it would be a, tough, a bit tough to celebrate with them, but still, if I wanted, I would need three Maracana stadiums to pack everybody in there for the celebration. If you're a bit older, there are fewer uh, of you, so then you may just rent one stadium and still have then the party, nevertheless. Now, as everything good has to come to an end, also I'll tell you the ultimate question, how long will I live? And it's a similar model, right? You, I know how old, you know how old I'm now, you know my gender, my country, and through those data points, you can estimate now how long you live. And the date is, uh, I'm not sure if you find it interesting, but it's, the date is there. It's May 31st, 2048. <laughs> and it's actually a Sunday. So I'm, wa <laughs> so I'm wondering what I'll be doing that day. <laughs> Maybe I got a heart attack from watching a football game. Um, now, if you do the same with you, and assuming now you'll be a bit older and, or your parents, and I would project 20 years to live, um, don't call me in 20 years and says, Wolfgang, I ran out of all my savings because you said I'm gone. No, it is, <laughs> it is possible that you live longer. It's possible you live shorter. It's just assuming you're an average person, an average, in my case, German male uh, of my age. And often we don't enjoy being average, but that's just how often things are. Even, even if you think you are above average, just do the average of all the above average, and you still get the same number. Now, it's a bit sad, again, I would die just before 2050, um, which, you know, if those of you who were there 2000, that was a big celebration. It'd be nice to be there 2050. Uh, now, I'm here as a world citizen, um, but as a German, I get a few extra years. So, <laughs> so November 29, 2053, that's what I can still hope if that counts. Still, you know, still fine, um, but it's also November like we have now, and I'll miss out the 2054, which is 100 years after Germany won the World Cup first. <laughs> so if I wanted to have that one, I think I need to stay in Austria because I get six months extra. Uh, <laughs> My name. Um. Now, the broader question is still, you know, what do we make all out of this and what do we take back? And I want to leave you with two things. The first is, don't wait for tomorrow. What do you think the probability is that I'll die the next 10 years? It's actually not too high, fortunately, it's 3%. But it's still sizable, right? Imagine you have class reunion, and I just had mine. If you meet again in 10 years and you were 30, you, you, one, one would have died of your friends and, and peers. And so saying goodbye and, and having somebody die around you happens often. Even though we all live longer, life is still too short most of the time, and I'm sure you miss the people who have died around you, like I miss my mother, and I still would have loved to 
have these discussions with her and to know how her life was at my age when, when she was young. And I'm missing all of this. And so if you still have your parents around, use that time, engage with them, because you never know when, when it will be over. And do the same with your children. Tell your stories to your children, because they will treasure that, I can assure you. The second is embrace the youth. The normal thing we look in life is we look in, look in one direction. When we are children, we look at our parents. When we are students, we look at the teachers. And when we are then have our first job, we look at our bosses and boss. And normally, they are older than us. They're by definition, older than us. So just don't look always in this one direction, which is natural. Look also in the other direction. Look at all those young, dynamic, connected people that come on stream now and that are driven and have talents that many of us don't have anymore and that have ideas and ideals and drive that will reshape our world of tomorrow and the world of your children. Because if you don't do this, it will happen to you what happened to me, which is you become old very quickly without realizing it. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Let him enjoy it a bit. Thank you, Wolfgang.